Hello, everyone. In this lecture, we're going to continue the discussion on generalized Markov models. So specifically, we're going to talk about uh, semi-Markov processes and uh, long-term analysis. So first, let's have a look at the definition of semi-Markov process. So we have xt, t greater than or equal to zero, and that with the state space, equals to uh, one, two, and to n. So each time the process enters state i, it will remain there for a random amount of time with the mean sojourn time, wi. Then make a transition to state j with probability ij. Then stay in state j for wj time, on average and jumps to state k with probability jk and so on, okay? As we can see from this figure, so that you see the x-axis is time and the y-axis is not nt anymore because previously in renewal process, we have a counting process or CT, cumulative uh, process for the net cost. So if we have nt, that is the total number of events Okay, by time t. If we have ct is a total net cost by time t. Now we have xt, x is a state. We're looking at a state of the system. So each time when the process enters a state, for example, state x0, x1, x2, x3, it belongs to the state space. So every time when you enter a state, for example, x1, it will remain in x1, for a random amount of time and uh, with the mean surgeon time wi. So here is w1. So, and when the time comes, you're gonna make a transition. The transition could be in state j, could be in state k. But in, in the, to state j is pij, to state k is pik, okay? And if you get into j, it will stay in J for WJ. So the time actually depending on the state you are in right now. WJ time on average, and then jumps to state K with probability PJK and so on. So here the difference is the mean surgeon time. This is a, a random amount of time. This does not necessarily to be exponential. And uh, it could be a general random distribution, but a mean is wi. So wi equals to x0 equals to i. When the state is in i, then you got the mean waiting time or mean, uh, this is the first event time because this is x0. So the inter, uh, the waiting time is actually depending on the state. If the beginning state is j, then you're going to wait there for wj. And if the beginning state is i, you're gonna wait for there in wi. <clears throat> so the mean surgeon time depends on the state, okay, where, which state you are in. Okay, the difference between DTMC, CTMC and semi-Markov. So DTMC, you have a transition matrix, discrete time point, okay, from time one, time two, time three. So you make the transition. CTMC is, uh, is it's actually defined by the rate matrix. And uh, semi-Markov is, uh, is defined by the transition probability matrix and the waiting time, okay? This is uh, a general random distribution, P and W. Now let's have a look at an example. Suppose let's revisit the two-state machine example. So this machine has two states, alternate between up, that is we denote as one, and down states. So xt is the state of the machine at time t. It could be in up or down, so zero or one. So is xt a semi-Markov process? Okay. Now un, this up time and D, dn down time, that's not necessary to be exponential anymore. So we have a general random distribution. And EU is the mean uptime, ED is the mean downtime. Suppose the machine starts in 
state x0 equals to 1. Stay up for u amount of time with a mean expectation u. Then moves to state x1 equals to 0. Stays down for d amount of time. So mean ed. Then move back to state x2. That is move back to 1. And proceed this way forever. You see the transition. If you are in the up state, you will get into the down state. And from down state, you're going back to the upper state. Okay, so the state space is zero and one. And the transition probability from up to up is zero, from up to down is one. From down to up is one, and from down to down is zero. Okay, so the waiting time is x0 equals to zero, and s1, the first uh, uh, event time, that is ed. W1 equals to EU. This is expectation. So it's a semi Markov process. Now, machine maintenance example. Let XT be the state of a machine at time T. Previously, we are looking at up and down. Now, suppose we detail the down state to two different states. So up is one. Right, and now once it's done, it could be failed. Right, failed if it is if it is fail if if failure before reached H V sent to repair. Okay, so if after H V we just replace upon failure, no repair. So we have two more two states under repair or under replacement, and the replacement needs time. This is a distribution, mean C. And a repair also has, has needs time, needs B, the distribution B. The lifetime is A with mean A. So if the machine is up, now it, it fail be, before reaching HV sent to repair. It fail after HV replace upon failure, no repair. Now, if the machine is sent to repair before reach HV, the repair time, if the repair time is less than U, we back into use. That means you have finished repair before U and back into use as good as new. If it's more than U, repair attempt is abandoned, replaced with a new one. You see here, if it's up, then you can go into repair or replacement. It depends on whether you the failure reaches H V or not. So this is a cumulative uh, distribution less than or equal to, right? So if it's less than or equals to V, this probability will be repair. If it is more than V, then it, one minus A V will become under replacement. So if it is under repair, so there's a probability that if it is less than u back into use, so this is up, bu is a cumulative uh, distribution function. And one minus bu is more than u, this is a probability. We will go, get into enter the replacement. So if the machine is under replacement, then it will go back to up state, okay, for 100% probability. So if the machine is in the upper state, the waiting time, okay, expected is actually the expected lifetime. The mean is A. So if the machine is under replacement, so this CDF function is C, so expected replacement time is C. So if machine is in under repair, is under repair, the expectation will be the minimum of U and the repair time. So if it is less than U or greater than U. So this is a truncated random variable. And the U is greater than or equal to zero. And the repair time is also a non-negative, greater than or equal to zero. So based on the expectation definition of truncated uh, random variable, we got, we got, let's denote this as BU. The, the average time, the expectation uh, of waiting in state two under repair is actually BU. Okay. Now, 
uh, as we can see, this, this process is defined by this transition probability matrix and the, the W uh, values, the waiting, waiting surgeon, uh, mean surgeon time vector. Now let's have a look at long-term analysis. So semi-Markov process, state space, we have transition matrix because this SMP, semi-Markov process, is defined by transition probability matrix and a surgeon time vector W. Let's define Mij, I does not equal to J, mean first passage time from state I to state J. And mean JJ is the mean intervisit time of state J. That means you are in state J and you come back to visit the state J again. Okay. So the theorem is mean first passage time, Mij satisfies Mij equals to, so if you are in state I, and you're going to stay in state I for WI amount of time on average. And then you are going to make a move to state K. Definitely the state K is not going to uh, equals to uh, K equals to one. So here it should be I, okay? So K doesn't equals to I and then k from one to n. So you make one step transition from i to k, and then you make a, another, the, this is like a conditional expectation, m k to j again. Okay. So here, please, uh, please note, this k should, should not be i, should be j. Just now we talked about, because when you make a one step transition, when you stay in state i for wi amount of time, so pii is actually zero because in your transition, we, if you have already stayed to uh, wi amount of time, you're, you're, you're not going to get into state i again. So this, you can count pii, it's actually a zero. So it, it is same as you don't count it. And, but this one step transition should not include in J and you, you don't get into J in the first step, okay? And then if you reach K, K could equals to one to N, goes from one to N. You make one step transition into K, then you are going to have mean first passage time from K to J. Okay, so this is like the conditional expectation we discussed before. You see Mij, you stay in I for Wi amount of time. Now you make a transition to K. Okay, but a K could be any different kind of state. And uh, if, it is, if it is K doesn't equal to J, and then you will have, um, if K equals to J automatically, you have already got Mij. If K doesn't equal to J, you still need to have mean first passage time from state K to J. And this is like uh, the, uh, the minor, right? They have a dot to choose the conditional expectation. If you recall the example we discussed in conditional expectation, this is actually what uh, uh, similar to what we had before. So the basic idea is just to make a, a one step transition and then go all the way uh, to do the MKJ. Now, the theorem of mean intervisit time. So assume the embedded DTMC, Xn, n greater than or equals to zero, is irreducible, and that pi equals to pi one, pi two to pi n be a non-zero solution to the balance equation. So this is an embedded DTMC, okay? If you got the pi, this pi actually expected a fraction of transitions to, uh, state i in the long run, okay? So here we have two conditions, irreducible, okay? Irreducible, and so you have non-zero solution, and you don't need to normalize the solution over here because they are all ratios, pi and pi. So assume you have an embedded DTMC and you got the pi, okay? So that is a long run expected fraction of transitions to state i. Pi i. Mjj 
the mean first passage time that you are in state J, and then you wait for WJ amount of time, and then you make all different kind of transitions, and then you come back to J. So this is the uh, mean intervisit time to state J. It's actually equals to the summation from I from one to N pi I W I over pi J. So this is a theorem that we can calculate the mean intervisit time to a state J. Now, let's have a look at uh, how to use this theorem to calculate the mean intervisit time. Let's revisit the two state machine. Compute the mean time between two repair completions. Okay. So here, two state machine up and down. Okay. And in the during down, you just repair. There's no replacement. So this is a simple example. We don't look at the replacement. So up and down. So up, down, up, down, and up, down, right? So embedded DTMC is irreducible. We want to look at the between two repair completions, that is U is here, up, down, repair, and then repair complete, okay? And then up and down, repair complete. So between two repair completions is actually, you enter state one and then come back to state one again. So it should be M11. So the mean surgeon time is W0, W1, okay? Solution to the, balance equation and you got a pi zero equals to one, pi one equals to one. So M11 we are equals to pi zero, W zero plus pi one, W one divided by pi one, which is actually equals to expectation U uh, plus expectation D. Now let's have a look at the machine maintenance problem. Compute the expected time between two consecutive repair commencements. So repair commencement. So previously we have one, two, three. Now let's go back. So this example, one, two, three. So actually we repair commencement, then we have to calculate it to two. So solution to the balance equation, we have transition probability uh, matrix, we also have W, so which defines the semi-Markov process. So we solve this balance equation, we will be able to get pi one, pi two, pi three. So M22 will equals to pi one, W one, pi two, W two, pi three, W three divided by pi two. And this will be our expected time between two consecutive repair commencement. Now, let's have a look at the occupancy distribution. Previously, we talked about the pi. Pi is a long run fraction of transitions. That's expected long run fraction of transitions to state i in the long run, okay? And the occupancy is actually the, is different from pi. It's actually long run fraction of time. Previously, the fraction of transitions Okay, this is a long run fraction of time the semi Markov process spent in a state J. So let MJT to be the total amount of time the SMP spends in state J during the interval zero T by time T. So the PJ is the long run fraction of time the, the SMP, the semi Markov process spent in state J. So as T goes to infinity, it should be the fraction of time, so total amount of time you are in state J divided by total, total time, okay? So P1, P2, Pn, this will become long run occupancy distribution of the semi-Markov process. So the theorem here, suppose Xt is a semi-Markov process with irreducible embedded DTMC, okay? This DTMC, you see, DTMC embedded is actually represented by Xn. N is a discrete time point time when you make the, the, the index of the transition. The T is continuous time, T greater than or equals to zero, but N is integer, okay? So the occupancy distribution of the semi-Markov process exists is independent of the initial state of the semi-Markov process. So PJ, long run fraction of time, the process spends in state J 
equals to pi j w j divided by summation from i from one to n pi i w i. Okay, the w i is a mean surge in time in state i. The so pi is a solution to the DTMC, okay? Balance equation of DTMC. Now let's revisit the uh, two-state machine. Compute the long run fraction of time of the machine is up. So semi-Markov process embedded DTMC. So this will become pi one because up is one. So pi one W one divided by pi zero W zero plus pi one W one. So because this pi zero pi one equals this one, W one equals to expectation U uptime, average uptime, W zero expectation D downtime, expectation uptime. Again, let's revisit the machine maintenance uh, example. Compute the long run fraction of time a machine is working. So working is uh, upper, uh, up, right? So P1 should equals to W1, uh, pi one W1 divided by summation and equals to one, two, three, pi I W I. So this will become A, right? Because we know the pi one, pi two, pi three, and pi one equals to one W1, the expectation time is A. And then we have all the values available in the previous example. So we got the expected long run fraction of time a machine is working. Okay, so this is the end of the semi-Markov process. So previously, uh, I, I just want to mention that uh, if assuming you have a truncated uh, random variable, how to com com uh, compute the expectation of minimal x and c. C is a constant, x is a, a non-negative uh, random variable, okay? Now, this is a, this is a calculation. This is a derivation. Why we have the the results for the BU? So BU is actually here. Let's let's have, go back. So how to calculate this part? W two goes from zero to U one minus B X D X. This is BU. This is actually uh, documented here. So if you want to know why we got BU, this is actually uh, the derivation is here. Okay, so. This is the uh, end of this lecture. So in the generalized Markov models, we actually, so far we have discussed the renewal processes, renewal reward process. In the renewal process, we focus on NT. NT is a counting process. So that's for total number of events by time T. Renewal reward process, we are focusing on the CT. CT is the total net cost, okay, by time T. And, and the semi-Markov process focus on the XT. So here, XT. So XT, XT is actually the state, okay? So semi-Markov, we need a transition probability from each state, how long we're gonna wait here and which probability, uh, or with what probability we're gonna transition to a next state. So we need a transition probability matrix and the sojourn time. Uh, vector. So DTMC, we have transition matrix. CTMC, we have rate matrix. And we know the inter-arrival time, uh, inter-event time is actually the exp exponentially distributed. Now, semi-Markov, we stay in a state for a amount of time, depending on the state, okay? But the general distribution does not necessarily to be, to be exponential. So this is a major, major difference between DTMC, CTMC and the semi-Markov process. So um, up to this lecture, we can generalize the Markov model to a different distribution rather than, uh, especially the inter-arrival uh, time, the waiting time does not have to be uh, exponential, can be a general distribution. So hopefully through those uh, lectures, you get a better idea on how to develop a generalized uh, Markov models. And then we also have a case study, okay? and on how to use the semi-Markov uh, uh, models to solve the real, real problem. And it's going to be available in the next uh, lecture, okay?